Okay, so when you start out, first of all, you never start off with clean oyster. Well, not if you buy them from a waterman. Nine times out of 10, they're gonna have the muck and the dirt all over them still. You see the shell fragments coming off of my hands. All of that stuff makes for an appetizing meal. So we gotta knock all that off first. With lukewarm water, not cold, because if you do this long enough, you'll freeze your hands. So make yourself comfortable. Start by just simply rinsing the oyster. Knock off the sediment. Get in the crevices and stuff like that with the with the shell. And we got something that looks like that. Then you can move on to just a light brushing. So. Again, just rinsing through the water. That water is getting a little hot, so knock it back a little. I'm just hitting the shell. Get the dirt off. All right. Then you end up with this. The primary types of oyster knives that you're gonna see out there. Um, so I've been shucking for 30 years and I can tell you, this is the oyster knife that I started out with. Um, <laughs> You can see, you can see it's, uh, it's had some wear and tear on it. All right, but you got the point. It's not, uh, it's not sharp, but it, it's rounded. It's enough to, um, it's enough to cut that, that mollusk muscle that it keeps them shut. Uh, really what you're trying to do with this kind of knife is you're, you're drilling. In fact, um, I think this knife might be called an oyster drill. Uh, what my granddad used to call it. Have, uh, a little bit wider bladed knife. Um, again, they're not sharp on the outside or anything like that. It's kind of almost like a rounded concave surface. I don't know if you can really see that or not, but you can see it's kind of rounded. Almost has an edge uh, on each side like a knife, but it's not sharp. The only part that's really sharp is right here. That's, uh, that's a pretty good point. Now, I personally, this is not a knife that I'm really familiar with. This is what I would call like a clamming knife, but um, I just wanted to show it to you. So this is Victorinox, which uh, makes an awesome knife, period. Um, but I came across their oyster knife a few years back uh, at a restaurant, and I had to have one. So I've been using this one for a few years now. Um, and again, it's got all the same kind of basic concepts, but I think it's, uh, it's a harder steel. Um, you can take it to a stone and sharpen up the edges a little if you want. You can also get that point back by simply grinding. So I don't like to work with a super sharp point, uh, with this kind of oyster knife. I kind of keep it a little bit dull. Um, cause just, uh, just my preference. This is a toadfish, and uh, I gotta be honest, this has really uh, been my go-to knife here lately. It's uh, it's rounded like your traditional oyster knife. It's concaved. Um, but you got you got your point. Um, I think it's it's definitely a hard steel, uh, harder steel that it's made of. It's got a lot of weight on the back end of it. As you can see, it's really ass heavy. So it falls down. Um, it just kind of, it just works in your hand. Um, and you can get a little bit of purchase on it. So, you know, like depending on whether you want to pry, the oyster shell is not, um, not perfectly symmetrical or anything like that. So sometimes you've got angles that you've got to kind of adjust for. And this flat side really lets you get the purchase you need to, to pop that shell. So as you can see, here is the hinge of the washer. I'm gonna try and get the knife to stick right there. So yeah, 
there's your hinge of your oyster right there. As you can see, the bottom shell, this is the top shell where my finger's pointing at right here. This is the bottom shell. There's your hinge. Okay. And when you open the oyster, you always want to make sure that this longer side, this more pronounced uh, extension of the shell is on the bottom. And the reason you do that is because typically the oyster is going to be a little bit more concave or bowl shaped on that side. So you're going to get, uh, when you go to open the oyster, you're not going to lose all the juices out of the oyster that way. Um, you got good surface uh, to work with and you're not digging into your wife's countertops. Um, I've got a cutting board under here and a, and a rag. The rag is more so you all can see, but um, I'm just going to show you kind of what you do. So you'll see right off the bat, what I was talking about, about this, uh, this oyster toad knife, it goes right in to the shell. It fits right in there. I mean, it's just sitting there. Of the oyster, so here's your front end right here. This is where you would, I would say your muscle is um, that keeps the oyster shut, which I'll, I'll try and show you here in a second. But basically I'm working from the backside and there's a, there's a, a lot of ways to do this and I'm gonna show you just a couple. But this is a way that's worked for me. Um, you know, some people might say it's the wrong way. Some people might say it's, a, you know, I'm doing it wrong. I don't know. It works for me. I've done it for 30 years and it's not been a problem. So uh, basically what you're doing, first of all, is getting that knife in there. I'm not using a whole lot of force. And then all I'm going to do is turn back towards myself. I'm just turning back towards myself, right? And you felt that muscle just pop. So, some of these shells, some oysters, the shells are a little bit brittle. Um, so you got to kind of watch out for that. But the shells pop right here. And you can see just the weight of that knife is holding that oyster open right now. So I'll go, next step is to cut through that muscle. Again, this is not a knife in the traditional sense of being sharp. All you're doing, though, is getting in here, getting in there, and just, and then, there you go, there's your oyster. You see, I'm using the Victoria knives. Again, this is just a solid work tool right here. It's good. Uh, again, I'm going to do the same thing. We'll find the hinge on the back of the oyster. There's the front of your oyster. You can tell it's, um, not all oysters have this scalloping, but on, it's generally going to be your flat edge. Uh, and you can look at an oyster. I don't know how else to explain it. That's the front of the oyster. This is the tail of the oyster. The tail of the oyster gets more narrow, I guess, is the, uh, universal i kind of get it in here and wedge it in this oyster i can already feel the shell starting to starting to break on me this this knife is not it's not super light or anything like that it is also it's got a little weight in the back end which is i think a, a good feature for oyster knife to have um but you're just going to wedge that knife in there like that right again doing the exact same thing i did before i'm just going to turn Toward turns myself and just pop that shell. I'm trying to keep a little bit of control as you can see where my thumb is. It just helps me get a little bit more control of that knife so I don't slip and um, you know run it through my finger or your hand. Um, again, just taking the oyster, laying it out, and This is a real dull edge, so it doesn't cut well, you'll see. But there's your oyster. This one just, there's just not much of a, there's just not much of a hinge exposed at all. 
So in this shirt, I'll, I'm gonna just show you the way that I learned to open an oyster uh, originally. Anyhow, uh, I really didn't use the hinge method until uh, I got a little bit older. But it's important, again, make sure your oyster is good and clean. As I did that, I saw some mud still right here. So we knocked that mud off. I'm gonna go ahead and hit my knife real quick. All right. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna try and use this point, this right here. It's got a little bit narrower of a point. I'm gonna use that point and try and work it into the shell. I'm actually drilling into the shell. All right. And then once I, I get to a certain point, I'm able to get that knife in there. I wanna get as much of that knife in as I can because I'm gonna, again, use that same technique of turning back towards yourself. I guess, uh, what would that be, counterclockwise? And here's your oyster. All right, and finally, another one. It's got a hinge. Another one. It's got a hinge. Um, there's a couple different ways you could go about this one, but I just want to see, out of my own curiosity now, how this uh, this little wider one with point works out. I'm just one. Yeah, that's what I kind of feared it was going to do. It's got a little too much point to it and you're gonna break off the edge of the shell. That's a little bit worried about. Mm -hmm. That's a good looking washer. Uh, to finish up here, I'd say my favorite, you know, if I'm going to do the going in through the uh, uh, the hinge, I'm going to want to work with something like this uh, this uh, toadfish. This thing is just, that's, a, that's an oyster knife. That's what it's supposed to be. And the Victoria Knots, again, that would be my second favorite. And the thing that these two both have in common it's just, they're weighted. They're weighted in the back end. They feel good in the hand. They feel solid. They're made out of good metal. Um, you know, it's a quality metal. I have no doubt that, uh, that that metal will hold up and that I can put some real some real pressure on it to get the you know stubborn oyster open. Um, the oyster drill, again, is what I grew up with. Uh, this is just comfortable to me. And uh, it, it just makes for a good alternate knife if you know if, if, if it were me I'd get one like this and one like this um, you know this way you got you got them all covered you can get in any oyster in the world with with these two tools uh, this um, like I said I eat clams too and we open clams I could see this being a good clam knife not my first choice for an oyster